book your driving lesson now at dla-driving.co.uk. Hello and welcome to Owen the Town. I'm Lou Gregory and here's what's coming up today. A brilliant performance from Luton at Kenilworth Road and a great point against high-flying Fulham. Today we'll be talking about that game. Was it one of our best performances of the season against a team? Let's be honest, their value, I think, on the pitch has worked at £85 million. And to be fair to them, they were pretty good. But today we'll discuss that one or draw. Calday Smith, what a performance he had at the weekend. Were we wrong about this guy? Have your opinions changed about this guy and how good has he been for us this season? We'll discuss him today and we'll also answer your Instagram questions and plenty more. And we're a week away nearly from uh, the Christmas podcast. I can't wait for that as well. So uh, how's that going for you, Dave? Christmas podcast? Yeah, I'm all, I'm all ready for it. I've, yeah. I've got a I've got a one definite person to chat to and another one in the pipeline. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Nice. But I guess I'm going to take one for you this this week. So I'm going to have two on the Christmas podcast. One for you, one for me. I've already said I'm going to have oh, two, so enough. that's that's yeah. no different, right. is it? Two. Cool. Big so greedy, huh? Well, is what it is. Anyway, uh, Fulham game of the weekend it was a good one, wasn't it? Yeah, it's great. I enjoyed it. Brilliant. I enjoyed the I enjoyed the atmosphere. I enjoyed how we played. It was it was an excellent game. Uh, before we get into it, three word views. Michael says, "Well deserved point." Meg says, "Felt like win." Uh, Chris says, great team effort. Justin, Bree, Elijah, goal. Matt, great second half. Lee says, we can compete. Jason, safe hand Shay. Joanne, Kenny was rocking. Frank, yes. Fulham's fans, quiet. And Kieran says, respect James Bree. I want to talk about Frank's point straight away. Fulham fans, I thought were the worst fans we've had at Kenworth Road in a long, long time. Well, they didn't have their clappy sticks with them. That's the first thing. Um I don't know. Though, for a team top of the league, they ex- incredibly quiet away support. Well, they're incredibly is- quiet at home, let alone away. Yeah, true. Let's be fair. We've been there and they've been as silent as anything. Yeah, disappointing support yeah. for them. But, you know, they're lording it I above everyone. I would say maybe they're bored of singing, but they don't really sing anyway, do they? So what, no, what three word takes your fancy? <coughs> uh, mine was from Lee. We can compete. I think we said, I said it beginning of the season. Well, not beginning of the season, obviously, but throughout. We can win, we can compete against anyone in this league. And I felt like, I always say, I feel like when the opposition, opposition's a lot stronger. Jeez, I like one beer and that's it. <laughs> opposition's a lot stronger, we become stronger. And I thought that was the case for the whole of the 90 minutes on Saturday. I thought we were fantastic. I'll be honest, best performance of the season as well. I, I had one that you didn't read out, which was could have won, in yeah. my opinion. Could have won. Um, yeah. All positives from the weekend, don't you think? Oh, mate. You can, well, do you know what the funny thing is? I had a few people behind me moaning. Well, actually, one person in particular moaning, you know, about certain people's mistakes. Oh, fucking hell, what's he doing this? And in the end, a few of us turned around and went, fuck are you on about, mate? What, what is wrong with some people? Honestly, no pleasing some people, but anyone who was not impressed by that, I'm, yeah, I'm on the microphone. Here we go, a bit closer. But anyone who was not impressed by that on Saturday is an absolute madman or madwoman. Yeah. So... But yeah, unreal. Great performance. Best of the season. I think we should get into the game and talk about the changes that were made from Blackpool. Mendes, Gomez and Lansbury dropped out for Musco and Pelly. Wasn't too surprising, I think, Bataille, when we discussed this last week on the podcast, you said you didn't see Lansbury starting. No. And we were like, will Mendes, Gomez start? Probably not. Um, and to be honest, I, I thought Musco and Pelly came in and they both, I thought they both did pretty well, to be honest. I'll tell you what, Pelly, you know, I like to get his back occasionally. Wow. Often, but I felt he was absolutely unreal on Saturday. Unbelievable. I think Musquay took his took his sweet time to get into it a little bit, but quality all around performances from all the boys. But nah, like I said, Pelly, fantastic. What do you reckon, Dave? One of his best games of the season, if not. If I'm honest, um it's hard to pick out the best player on the day. Pelly did have a great game. Um I thought he was very strong and, and actually didn't put too much astray, did he, this time? No. You know, the occasional time when when he, we, he loses possession or whatever else, you go, oh, come on. But I don't remember any of that. So, yeah, I go with you. He had a great game. 
I heard a few fans around us moan at one stage when Pelly like took the ball down um, because he didn't play it like first time, but he like let it bounce mm. and then played the most amazing diagonal ball. And it was just kind of like, for a minute, everyone just needs to like chill out and just trust the process. Like, why were people like, yeah, but, but, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. he it's, sprayed it's that ball like out it. to Bree and it's a beautiful pass. We all know it could have either done, well, right, well, clearly he did that, but it could have gone completely the other way as well with Pelly. But no, it was, I remember what you're saying, I'm real. Was that first half? Yeah. Yeah, the one <clears throat> straight across to the, to the bobbins yeah, there. Nice yeah. diagonal. Amazing yeah. pass. And really well controlled, by the way, when, when it was received. Um, just before 20 minutes end, Fulham <laughs> took the lead. I thought this was a bit offside, but we haven't really seen any angle to prove that it was, but Nathan Jones seems to think it was, and they have analysis cameras, so I'm pretty sure they can yeah, tell. And I'm pretty sure it was as well. Um, I think, actually, you can see it from the, the, sh- from the higher shot, uh, from when the ball first goes across the the goal, the guy is well. Uh, that, I don't know who was at the back with him there, but the hands went up straight away. He was well in front of our defenders, well in front, and he headed it back over. And at that point, it should have been called. Yeah, obviously I'm behind the goal, and I felt straight away. I just turned and went, "Is he offside?" And a few people went, "Yeah, I'm pretty sure." And then obviously there's a few calls, but nothing. But look. Happens, then. I mean, we'll surely get a couple of uh, chances like that that we're going for our sake, but... Actually, just terrible. at that point, I was I was saying to Luke on the day that <laughs> just before Mitrovic scored, I said, wouldn't it be great if we could say Sonny's had him in his pocket all day mm. and then he, he sco- and escapes and he, sc- and he scores a poacher's goal as well. He's in the right place, right time. And that's the only thing I can say that's good about him at the weekend. Sonny's done well to head it off the line. If you, if you watch it back... This is just a question, and this isn't criticism. Could maybe James Shea stand up a bit quicker or not maybe fall down? Well, he was on his knees, wasn't he? He was practically on his knees. Now, obviously, he went to try and save the original shot on goal. Yeah. So you can understand it a bit. But, yeah, he should be up quicker, really. I'll be honest, I don't really have an opinion on this one. Well, you can't. No, it's fine. I'm, no, it's I'm, unsure. I'm unsure. I don't know. I'm not blaming it. I'm just asking. I've watched no. it a few times, and I... I really don't know. I think it's just. It's, I don't think you can. Unlucky. I don't think you can blame him for the goal because he was trying to save the pr- the previous um, shot. But yeah. you know, you'd like to think if he could if he'd have got up quicker, that goal doesn't go in. I'm not saying you know he could have done anything about it. But if he if he was up quicker, yeah, of course. I was happy to see James Shea keep his spot though, and I thought again he was solid and he proved that in that second half of a brilliant mm-hmm. low save. But most realistically, if you look back at the game, Shea hasn't had to make a save really. Hey, look. For all Fulham's possession, he's not th- had a lot to do. I think if you, you class certain things as I say, I think I think there's once mm. or twice when he's had to collect the ball or gather it, you know, it's straight at him. Mm. But they're not really saves as you would, would say, really, like you say. But that just I just think that proves the absolute performance from, like I say, the midfield, the pressing, the closing down. I think how many times did they go through a goal, really? They didn't, did they? No. Once, maybe. Their game plan was, was to get it out it. to the wingers and get it into Mitrovic. That was yeah. their game plan. There, was times, sure time, there were times when you could tell the difference in class because of the way that Fulham played and moved the ball around and how quick they were. But then, you know, you could also give us credit for the way that we, mm. we, we pressed and matched them at, at times. Uh, at the very beginning, I'm thinking, my God, we're not going to get hold of the ball today. But we what, did press well, yeah. didn't we, on but, Saturday? But once we, we settled well. into the game... You know, I think, and I've read more comments from, I, I looked at the Fulham's fan site just to see what they were saying. And a couple of people were being really honest, you know, the better team on the day, were they thought we were the better team on the day. And I can't disagree with that. But yeah, at the I, time, I agree with that well. it, it's frightening to see how fast, uh, because they're, they're essentially a Premier League team. Literally, it's, it's frightening to see how fast they play the ball at times. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? I mean, we need to cheer up a bit, boys. We all look a bit glum and depressed, but... No, no. Really, we're not, no, are we? Not we're so, well. I, no, it's not. It's just a thing that they are probably the best team we've seen at Kenilworth Road this season, without a shadow of a doubt. Yet, they didn't They didn't do what they were capable of, mm-hmm. but is that because we played so well? I think so. Yeah. I, was gonna say, I just feel like they've got the quality in that team to hurt you if you're not 100% switched on all game and you're not at your best. And I yeah. feel like then that's, a, that's credit to us because we had to be to keep him at bay and keep him to really and I think the official figures may be like what, has Jacob done it? Six on target says here they? but I don't remember them really apart no. from that Shea save in the second half from that corner it's not like he's had 
to well, save might, us yeah, there might five been, occasions. Yeah, there might have been six shots on target, but they might have been really woolly ones, you know. The ones where... Say two, two, or, well, two shots on target lead up to the goal, wasn't it, really? But, nah, to be honest, like I say, you said about the Fulham fans saying about the um, better team probably not winning, and it's true. We should have won, especially in that second half. We dominate. We made, well, I'll be honest, in that second half, I genuinely felt like we looked like the Premier League team or the, player, or the team with the £85 million pounds worth of players. I think we deserve more out of the game at, at the end of it. The second half, we were phenomenally good. Phenomenally good. And it was really nice to see. And you're competing on our shoestring budget compared to them, you know, with a billionaire owner or whatever, mm. whoever owns them. And you're just thinking, wow, you know, there is, there is hope for us yet. Because we all know there is. We can compete. That's the main thing. We can yeah. compete with every team in this league. And we, we have showed it. We said, we said last week before this game, if we show up... We can give him a game, and we did, and we deserved we deserved at least a point, and and maybe even more for for our performance. Well, just before half time, Musk, we went close, hit the side netting, um, and in the second second half, we did come out and we, we we started quite well, I thought, and I thought in the second half we were we, there were stages where we were, we were on top and and really like taking the game to them. Right at one um, point, they couldn't even get out their own like, penalty area or their uh, their defensive third. It was ridiculous. It was press after press after press. And you think, for so long during the game, you think it's not like the 60th, the 70th minute, and it's still pressing with like great intensity. How? That is ridiculous. And like, I think Nathan Jones said it, they probably run down the M1 naked or whatever. <laughs> now, do you know what? After that performance Saturday, you kind of go, yeah, you're probably right. You probably would. Yeah, fucking weird show, though, isn't it? <laughs> Imagine that I trust you to bring that one up. <laughs> uh, should we talk about the equaliser then? Um, look, James Bree is it's, it, I don't want to call him the scapegoat of the team at the moment because I think that's I don't know I, I, I feel like everyone is, is allowed to have an opinion and sometimes James Bree this season has been a bit hit and miss and I think it's like Nathan Jones said sometimes he is going to sky a free kick or mm-hmm. not beat the first man on a, on a corner or put a cross into the stand but to be fair I thought he was good again at the, at the weekend and the delivery for the free kick I think he did have a word with a fan after a after that went in or yeah, something, but well, I just for him. feel like yeah, because I feel like there's times in place, isn't it? I think if there was a bit of stick when he miscontrolled a pass at the weekend or a cross went out, and I was just like, I think you come have on, let's not get into this this mindset <laughs> again. But you're going to, you're always going to have those people. Unfortunately, you know, some people listening might be those people, and you know, some people do have their opinion, like you say, and obviously people can have their opinion, but sometimes, like you say, you just have to get behind the boys, just, just let them get on with it, take it, and make mistakes. Yeah, but if you take it in the contents of what game he's playing in, uh, a couple of weeks ago, you know, he couldn't hit a cross in to save his life. And you get a bit frustrated with that because then he shows that you can do it. And when he does it, he can do it really well. And I think that's the frustrating thing. You know he can deliver a ball. So you're disappointed when it doesn't get in there, when it's your only opportunity of the game. But on Saturday, that cross was perfect. And Absolutely yeah. perfect. And realistically, he Waited point. well, waited well. And, and uh, Eddie Bayer got on it really well, didn't he? Really well. And what a header that was. Yeah. Unreal diving header. He's just, we're running out of words to describe Elijah Adebayo, aren't we? Well, he's in contract. That's the main three words we want. You know, yeah. he's amazing. It's an amazing find. He's developing well. We do well to hang on to him. Well, he's on 10 goals already this season, um, which, when you think about it, is pretty good. And um, how many games we played? 25. 22. Oh. So 10 okay. goals in 22. No, it's brilliant. So he's on course to get 20 plus if he carries on. And if he gets 20 plus, then, then his value only goes up if he leaves. So, you know, I hope he stays and I hope he stays for a couple of seasons. And he's only 23 as well. Yeah. Wow. Either that or someone's going to see how good he's been and they're going to, you know, like a, you know, like a Brentford, like Brentford did with Tony or they're going to come in and offer and if he offer big money, he'll go. No, but we're I always, I'm always telling my work colleagues and this isn't like people that could sign Elijah, but like I'm always... God. I'm telling, I'm always like, Elijah Adebayo will be a Premier League player. I was like, from yeah. what I've seen of him, his, just everything he has, all of his, his traits and ability, I just think will lead him to be in the Premier 100%. League one day. And I think he will be, I think he'll be good in the Prem. Hey, he's more With than Luton just Town. goals. I mean, even if he goes to a Premier League team, right, and only scores, say, seven goals a season or whatever, I'll tell you what, he'll be more important to a lot of the other goals that are scored for that team that he plays for 
obviously hoping he doesn't go, but you know what I'm saying? Hang on a minute. It'll be Hang on, let's, let's put this straight. He could go up with us, so come on. Oh, yeah. Well, there is that as well. But like I was saying, but obviously on the other flip side of it, Dave, come on, man. Okay. I'll, ne- I'll never flip side. I know what you're saying, but it, I don't think, honestly, right, if we don't get up in the next two years or the next season and a half, we're not keeping him. That's how I feel. If we're not keeping him, we're going to profit from him. So, you know, it's win-win. Yeah, win. It's win-win. It's I'll win-win. Tell you what, so young strikers like that as well, they're like gold dust. And, well, we will get, we'll get a massive fee for him. I mean, how much did Tony go for? Uh, well, Brentford signed Tony for 10 mil, but they sold Ollie Watkins for 33. Oh, sorry, it was Watkins, yeah, that was yeah. it. That's and you think, I mean. like, if Adebayo can get anywhere near Watkins figures for that season, then why isn't why isn't Adebayo worth 30 mm. mil, you know? Anyway, it was a great uh, goal. It was a great yeah, let's goal. Not and talk you know about what? Goal anyway. let's I'll tell you what the else. The, the stadium was rocking at that point. It was suddenly, you know, it was just a brilliant place to be on Saturday. Oh, it was. I'll tell you what. Oh, I want to watch the full replay back. Just put it on. <laughs> uh, Shay did keep us in the game from that corner. Um, I think it was Jacob's put here that it was Musquay's wayward header. Do you know what? I think it was. But I think he reacted really well. I thought on the, t- at the day in, in real time, I thought it was an excellent stop. Yeah. He had to dive to his left, didn't he, to, to, to push it away. I thought excellent shot did keep us in the game. But after that, I don't think they, we were really troubled. No. I don't think it was nah, really troubled really. at all. I think, if anything, we would look the more likely to score. You know, towards the end of the game as well, you obviously, you obviously have that weird, horrible, like, gut wrenching feeling that you, you can see the last minute goal or whatever. I because, never ever yeah. felt like that. No, because last time they were here, that happened, didn't it? Yeah. I never once felt like that with five, ten minutes to go where I thought, there know was, what, if there's any team that's going to score here, it's going to be us. There was a couple of moments when Shay had to collect a ball that was passed back to him and he sort of stood over it and mm-hmm. didn't hold it and then he fell on it and it was like, Total shithousery, really. It was yeah. great. And you know what? At that point, you were grateful. I think I was only going to be nervous if maybe they got like a set piece and they were going to put it in the box yeah. to Mitrovic. But I think, I know apart from the goal, I thought we, we dealt, just, dealt with him pretty well. Well, Mitrovic, to be honest with you, didn't impress me much at all. I thought the way that he was, his gamesmanship was awful. Yeah, but he's like that. I was going to say, that's just the type of him. player he is, yeah, though, isn't then, it? And that's what know, makes him him. No. And so hard to deal with. Yeah, he was a bit of a dick. Though, he's an he? arsehole, in all fairness. Bit of a dick. You know, he's, a yeah. very, he's a very... I, I mean, how many that, times did yeah. you hear him shout and fall over like he'd been bloody taken yeah, out? Yeah, but then this the... is what opposition fans are saying about us with Danny Hilton for two, three years whilst we are in League 2 and League 1. People hate Danny Hilton. Yeah, well, Danny's a, he's a legend. Anyway, so... <laughs> but Mitrovic, he was... Uh, he didn't impress me at all. He, he got his goal and then he just wins the rest of the match. He was in the referee's face. He, he was everywhere. Because he's not used to it, Dave. He's not used to being controlled like that. That's why. That's why he whinged. Obviously, it's a good thing from our point of view. Like, brilliant. But, yeah, that's what the kind of player is. Though. He's a fucking massive whingy bastard. But, <laughs> so look, he's, we, he's very good. Excuse the language. Should we talk about that run from Cal Naismith from centre-half? He beat, yes. like, oh, four players. Yes. What a run, by the way. And we're going to talk about Shoot. Naismith in a bit. Oh, do you know what? If he'd have shot them that gone in, it's goal oh, of the season, beyond a yeah. doubt. That I, run was amazing. When people are saying shoot, I don't. when I look at their back, I don't yeah, see a no, shooting no option. And I think the pass was the right thing to do. I executed wrongly. Yeah. That was for Bree, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then Bree, slowly, Bree's slowly kind of like it. shot slash crossed kind of thing. He's just drilled any and it's just a bit wayward in the end, but... That could have quite easily yeah. found Musk. Or was it Musk? We were about the far who, post. I can't remember who it was, but yeah. Oh, mate, honestly. It's an exciting run, though, wasn't it? It was a real exciting run, sort of almost from the halfway line. I thought line, we were going to score there as well. Yeah, I, I thought it was it. You know, you stand up and you're about to celebrate and you think, oh, fuck, that was a bit deflating, wasn't it? Either that or keep running into the box and then take the foul. You know, well, but yeah. it was an amazing run. And how good was he on the weekend? It was amazing. Brilliant. It was the same as, um, was it Pelly? I think, was it Pelly? Went through as well and slipped. I think Don't the keeper remember. came out and claimed it or whatever in the second half. I remember it. Nope. No. And what about oh. the what, what about <laughs> the uh, good story? The, the Brilliant. Poten- Brilliant. I'm going. <laughs> the potential penalty incident at the very end there. I was going to say, should we have had a penalty at yeah. the, near the end of the game on your Dinma? I've seen him given. I've it's, seen yeah, him given. This is the thing. Like they, they them. Challenges or I mean, it wasn't is, it, is it even a challenge? I don't know what it is. I think it's just a coming together. But like no, you say, it's not a coming together because it, it, it was almost like he barged him off the ball. I can, I can, I can take shoulder to shoulder. But he had his bloody shoulder in the guy's ass almost when he was pushing him over. <laughs> Literally sort of midriff, you know. So I think it was a big shout for a pen. And I, I, I would say 
uh, yeah, you take it. I know like, I can say this and no one will ever know if it's going to be true or not, but I feel like that's the type of penalty that if you're Old Trafford and you're playing Man United and Man, you do that to a Man United player, they get a pen. Yeah. Or you're at Liverpool yeah, because and it's like 50, the 90th minute. Because Anfield, there's, yeah, but there's 50,000 people shouting penalty. Even if we're, at, if we're at Fulham away and that happens to Fulham, pen. Yeah, it's probably the first bit of noise I've made all game as well. Yeah, true. So yeah, probably. Fuck me, they're shouting. It must be something decent then. <laughs> must be a good opportunity to score, uh, get a penalty. But no, like, like you say, it was like you say they. You see them given probably seven times out of ten. But I felt it was a little bit. I mean, if it was one of our players. I don't know. It'd it, have been dream ending though, wouldn't it? It's okay. Oh mate, you imagine? Well, unless Ali Bide missed it, but they wouldn't have missed it. Well, no, of course, but good point. I am. We'll take that against top of the table. I'd Fulham, absolutely take the mm-hmm. point. If you'd have gone there and said we get a point against Fulham at the top of the table, and they're running away with a, with you know, with the, what goal scoring is not an issue to them normally. Take a point all day long. And to come but away we, and say we could have won the game as well. We That's could have had better. three. We could have had three. I mean, they scored Blackburn the other week. I know they only had ten Seven, men. wasn't it? Was it seven? I think so, yeah. Yeah. We, we could have, it was more than seven, wasn't it? Wasn't it nine? No. no. Seven. Seven? About six weeks ago, I say. Yeah. Away at Blackburn. On that. Yeah, I'm sure it was seven there. You've got to check it anyway. I'm just going to look. Show a little bit on it. One pound. <laughs> Should we talk about Cal Naismith then as, as a bit of a player focus today? Because... Of that amazing run, when I had a little chat with, uh, it was 7-0. Thank um, you, pound. <laughs> when I had that chat with producer Jacob today, when we were talking about the podcast, we were like, look, Cal Naismith seems to have changed a lot of people's opinions, because when he first joined, everyone was like, okay, it's not the most exciting signing. He didn't know what his best position was, and he came on against Bournemouth for his debut after like 20 minutes, and he kind of played like that left wing role. And it was like, mm, hasn't really set the world alive, but he's really found that position at centre-half now, hasn't he? And he's just looking like one of our best players if not our best player yeah. he's absolutely incredible and I've, I've seen a few people like, obviously on Twitter floating around saying people got bang on about Jordan Clark being the best free transfer but this guy wow how was like well I say how was like I snapped him up before we had but that's a bit rude to Luton but seriously how is he not being do you reckon it's difficult for him to come in and change his maybe natural game from being that left-sided player, maybe that left wing, that left wing, to being a centre half, that must take a lot to adapt. But didn't he play for the centre for Wigan, centre mid? I don't know. I think he's played everywhere, didn't he? Like I say, versatile. Hey, it's just ridiculous. I think that's a sign of good coaching and a good management. They they can see his potential in that area and then put him there, mm-hmm. and they convince him he can play there. And and genuinely, hey, he has stepped up in in recent weeks. Yeah. He's, he stands out quite a lot. What would you say? Is his best trait because I noticed something with Cal Smith where he gets the ball and he just calm, calm, and he's very good at carrying it and getting us to yeah, that yeah. next phase, isn't he? His vision, a bit his like vision as well, like you say, traveling from the back as well. I mean, we banged on about Reese Burke last weekend, uh, last week, sorry, said about him traveling with the ball and whatnot. But I feel like Naismith, he's the one that you know, he can get the ball, he can knock it past the player. It's almost like he doesn't with it, I don't know how he does it, but. He always seems to do the same thing. He gets the ball and he always like goes on the inside and the player always goes on the outside of him. You never notice that. And he's always automatically got five, about five, six, seven yards of free space around him every single time. He doesn't it's panic. It's intelligence, isn't he, it? He, it's brain, yeah. he, d- he literally doesn't panic on the ball and that's, that's exactly what you want, isn't it? Just sheer like, brain power. That's what it is. I think that's what it comes down to. You know, obviously, sheer brain power. Yeah, yeah. Mate. He has an eye for the game. He has an eye for a pass, and and he and, and he knows what he, you know. He reads the game really well, and he's an athlete as well. Yeah, which helps. I mean, when you've got athleticism, I say brown brain brown power. That's weird. Brain power, and whatever else, he, he's got everything. Let's face it. He's almost like a central midfielder. I can't think of anyone to like him to, but it's almost like having a very gifted central midfielder. Messi after that run of the weekend. Well, Oh, oh, did you see he's like... Cru- seen it, did you yeah. see he's like... Uh, oh, this is probably over your heads now. But did you see it like his Johan Cruyff turn? Where mm-hmm. he sort of s- swivelled round? Did you yeah, see that? Yeah, not about Johan Cruyff, Dave. Hell. Yeah, I just, want, just wonder, you know. Not about football. Jesus. Yeah, okay, come <laughs> So, did you see his Cruyff yeah, turn? Yeah, I think I saw that on Twitter today floating around, actually. But Brilliant turn. He's... I just think, for me, when he signed him, I was like, oh, it's not the most exciting thing, but now he's really kind of really stapled that place in that starting 11 and now I look at 
and I look at the team sheet, if he's not in it, I'm going to be a little bit disappointed. Oh, 100%. Do you reckon he starts in our best back three? Well, yeah, of course he does. If you don't put Cal Naismith in your best back three, then who do you put in? Because that's ridiculous. Who makes your best back three then? Well, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. One goes without three, saying. Really. Yeah. yeah, one goes without saying for Pizarro. Yeah, obviously. Um, obviously, him, Sonny, and Burke for me. I like Reese Burke. But then, Lockyer, oh, I don't know. Is it Lockyer or Burke? I don't know. But I like Reese Burke because he's, he's massive. I think, you know, having a tall player that obviously can ball carry as well and play out from the back, I think that also helps. But yeah, I think for the me, it's isn't it, free. Isn't it nice to have that, that situation where mm. you've got some people that you can put in the back three, stroke four, and it's hard to decide which ones they are? That's what you need. Maybe yeah. you can get another one as well in January or whatever. Just push them on as well a little bit more. But you do, feel, you do feel a bit more, um, what's the word? Um, I, don't, I can't remember the word I was going to say then. It's just, I just think when you, when you trusting, I suppose. Yeah. When, when you see those names on the sheet, you go, oh, okay, that's good. You know, yeah, whereas... In recent times, we have had players yeah. that obviously have come in and you think, oh, I don't know oh. about those going in there. Yeah. It's a bit like, uh, do you know what I mean? We, we don't ever have that anymore. Realistically, do we? I just think it's nice to have a solid, solid back line. And uh, I think we've got the makings of, of that all of the time now. Well, this is what you guys said about Cal Naismith. How did your opinion change on him since he joined? And in a back three, who are the best three? Richard says, I'm at the point where I think he could well be the best player at the, f- at the club full stop. Currently has to be one of the best back three, um, as his ball carrying and passing ability is miles ahead of the other back three contenders. His defensive ability up there just lacks height. How tall is he? Don't know. Six foot? Don't know. Six foot white? He's quite big, isn't he? Very oh. tall. How tall do you want him to be, Richard, is the question. Yeah. But I can't, you, can't, you can't disagree with that. Larrick says, stats say it's Tom, Cow, and Sonny as the back three. Uh, Hart says the same. Head says Burke instead of Sonny. And then he says, ducks as Batara throws an empty <laughs> lager can at him. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Batara? <laughs> Go on, launch it at the camera. If don't, 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 no, don't, no, don't launch it at the camera. I did think about it, I it's worth quite a bit of money. Yeah, I'll just steal it on the way out instead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you reckon to that, though? Well, it's a fair assessment, well, like well, we said. Well, yeah, exactly. Everyone has their opinion at the end of the day. And unfortunately, your opinion is wrong, but no, nah, joking. <laughs> but, nah, um, but look, everyone, like I say, everyone's got their own favourite players and, and whatever else. Just for me, Sonny can do no wrong, so... Yeah, all right, mate. <laughs> yeah, but there might be a time when, you know, Sonny's not available and then that happens. And you do play that back there, yeah. But when that does happen, you'd be solid. You'd think, OK, that, that, that'll work. You're not going to go, oh, God. Because your favourite player's not playing. Yeah, of course. You go, well, no, that's still a decent back three. Dave says, is there an argument to play him further forward? Can't slate his defensive work and I understand the importance of being able to play out from the back, but it does seem a bit of a waste for a technically astute player to not be involved up front more. To be honest, like I said, he's almost like, like I said, about five minutes ago, he's almost like having a, central, a gifted central midfielder in, at centre-half. But yeah, why It's not? important, though, to have Try a him. player like that I think at the back in the modern game, isn't it? Because yeah. like we saw with that run, if you can get the ball in that position and not feel the pressure like maybe we had with Matty Pearson back in the day that he thumps up the line and out to throw in, that Naismith can be a bit composed, bring the yeah, ball forward into that position. You don't really get them sort of like Tony Adams kind of players anymore, do you? At centre half, especially at a higher level of football. But no, it's true. But I mean, why couldn't you play him up top though? Uh, not up top, clearly, but a little bit further ahead in midfield, try him. Maybe put him in a cup game or something. I don't know. Yeah. See how it goes. But I think, also like you say, when someone's that good at centre-half, just why change him? Keep him there. Keep him there and see what happens. Matthew says, I first thought he was a journeyman, but since his switch to centre-back, very classy. Reminds me of Marcus Heikkinen. Uh, for example, a centre-back with a midfielder's ability, vision and awareness, which I guess is like what we just said there. That ability on the ball is what makes him such a good centre-half. The ability to carry it out, the transition, the play from defence to attack. He does it so well and that's why he's such a good player there. And the maddest thing is sometimes he's further forward than the actual central midfielders himself. Yeah. Which is crazy and he's still back before it, all of them as well. Will I think, says, I think, sorry, before we go, I think yeah. he did the same thing at, uh, against Forrest away as well. He carried the ball like, pretty much the whole way out of the pitch as well. Similar to what happened at the weekend. And Very then the similar. pluses are playing a back three. You do that and then I guess you move into a back four until mm-hmm. he's back. Anyway, oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's just how One it works. Drop, bang, there you go. Matthew, uh, no, we've just done Matthew. We'll do Will. 
He says, Unreal player, arguably the best slash one of the best on the ball players we have. Uh, Mike Simmons, LTFC News, says, Big fan of Burke and what he gives the... We'll start that one again. Mike says, Big fan of Burke and what he gives town both defensively and going forward. Can't be a more confident, informed player than Naismith, though. That spin and then the second half run was sublime. Still only 29, so surely Scotland are watching. Mm. Makes you think. There you go. He's probably got a bit of a chance, hasn't he? Well, they're probably just chuck fucking fat boy um, Grant Hanley in there, wouldn't they, I suppose? <laughs> but yeah, why not? Yeah, why, why not? Why not, exactly? If they're watching, yeah, definitely he'll get in. I think he should. I mean, yeah. like we talk about that spin. In, that's what we said. It's almost like a Cruyff turn almost. It, you know, he sold it very well. Really good. Um, maybe Scotland should give him a call up in their World Cup yeah. qualifiers or whatever it is. They've got playoff in it. Are they still in the playoffs? I think so. It's a shame that he won't get to the finals, though, but there you go. Uh, CRS says, I think he has to be in the team every week. Nathan Jones could ask him to play in any position. He would not disappoint. He's an absolute class player and has already suggested possibly the best all-round player at the club. He's immense. Yep. But you can't argue, can you? James says, when he first joined, it was just a bit meh. Didn't really make an impact, but my, oh my, since he's moved to centre-back, he can really hold the ball well, spray it anywhere, and is excellent at tackling and his runs. Well, it's exactly what you brilliant. just said, isn't it? You yeah. know, amazing. I'm it's amazing to have a player, though. Talent. But it's, it's nice to have a player that you think when he came in, you weren't that impressed, and suddenly he's gone, da da and then, you know, you're, you're on it. It, that, that says to me, brilliant, brilliant signing, brilliant coaching, and, you know, a really headstrong player that wants to do well for your team. 100% he's fantastic. Either way, he's not as good as Sonny still, though, is he? That's fine. <laughs> ah, well, we knew. So. Uh, well, you know. Should we get into some Instagram questions to finish off today? Uh, can if you Josh want says, and this oh, one's on. related to what we've just been talking about, is Cal Naismith a better player with or without hair? Ah, see, I was just about to mention the hair, and I thought it's probably you know inappropriate or irrelevant, but I'm going to do it anyway. Shave the hair off. Do you reckon? I think he's better with hair. Yeah, I know, but you like to see him shine under the lights. Hey, you could ask the same. <laughs> Push it up a little bit. <coughs> you could ask the same about Pelle's hairstyle at the weekend. Yeah. yeah, what was going on with his hair? There you go. So was Christ, he? Oh, I said a few split ends, didn't he? <laughs> maybe, maybe it's the the hair that's making our players play well right, well right now. Maybe, but yeah, like I say, since the hair, he has become well. It's not the hair, is it? Let's face it. I mean, I'm still shit at foot when I've got long hair now. But um, <laughs> but no, I just shaved the hair off because we were like to see a skinhead, didn't we? Close to the mic, please. Oh, mate, stop it. Uh, no, to, to be fair, he's done well all afternoon, evening. Sorry. Okay. Patrick says, are you happy with the points returned from Blackpool and Fulham? Yes. Yes. 100%. I mean, you can't argue with that, can you? The, 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 the game at Blackpool was brilliant, and to get a point against Fulham mm-hmm. brilliant. was perfect. Vanessa four, says, four from six. Sorry. Vanessa says, what needs to happen in January? Well, Does anything need to happen in January? Well, maybe a couple of players can go out that don't actually get into the team, or to the squad, should I say. Maybe trim the wage bill there a little bit. There's rumours that Danny Hilton's been linked with Northampton. Well, that doesn't surprise me. It doesn't surprise me. The question is, does he want to go? And I think Elliot Lee's been linked to that, making that charter move permanent. Yeah, that's, well, well, that's, that's got to happen yeah. at some point. Really. Why not? Um, um, what else needs to happen in January? We just need to push on. It'd if be we, nice if to sign another about... younger player, wouldn't it, that is just coming in to add to the, the younger group that's there to develop, I guess. I'll tell you something else we need to do in January. Beat Harrogate, get a decent team mm. in the FA Cup. That'd be nice. Um, and press on, push forward. It doesn't mean to say we have to sign anyone, we just need to maintain what we're doing. But you think for the club to move forward as well, it's important to look at every window as it comes of and course. goes. But don't you think they're already on that? Yeah, 100%. Of course, they're already on that. So We will sign, you know, January. Who we are, we, are we going to sign another striker? Are we going to sign another midfielder? Who knows? It has to be right, like you say. It has to be right. If it's not right, it's not going to happen. But also, I think, what's happened to Dan Potts as well? Yeah, is well, maybe it's, on his way out well maybe it's yeah, time for Dan Potts to move on. Who knows? Because I don't really see him having a future at the club. Uh, we got this one through on Twitter from On Harbour Watch. It says, question for the pod. We always say how our squad is worth pennies, but what is it worth right now? Wow. That's a good question. You should have told us that earlier so we could have sat down and worked it out. Um, it's very valuable. It's not in the same bracket as your Fulham's and your Bournemouth's right now. Because well, if you look at Fulham and you say Fulham squad at the weekend cost them 85 million, I think they spent 25 million on that Seri, Seri that centre yeah, midfield. Yeah. You wouldn't probably be able to sell him for 25 mil now. Maybe like so, about six, wouldn't you? Five. 
it makes you think. If you look at our combined players right now, our squad is probably worth 30 plus mil. Seriously? If you were to put our players on the market... I know, I know what you're saying with this, yeah. The worst I, I do, I do obviously, obviously we this. didn't sign our players with 30 plus mil, but yeah. I'm saying now, if you're putting Elijah Adebay on the market... And they can compete against teams that are supposedly worth this, yeah. I, I let's, say, you, let's say you take 20 mil for Elijah Adebay. How much is Cornick a mil? Would you more s- than that. Well, exactly, that's well, the thing. Would be more and then that. it's like Pelly Ruddock, is he more than a million? Sluger, we signed him for 1.2. Do we make profit on Sluger? And then by the time look, you've got all these mills adding up, like if you had to sell Sonny Bradley now, 2 million? I think, what's, what are these players 200. Like? 200 mil. Hey, do you know what? That's a general question you should put out there, see what the, the consensus well, is. What do you th- if we were to sell every single player in our squad, how much money would we get for them, for them all? Because I'm saying easily 30 plus million. I think we'd probably easily average out about three and a half million pound a player anyway. Either or. Obviously, you've got a certain players, like you say, Ali Bio, probably, well, I'm probably a bit too far here, but I think he's worth over 10 million pound already. I think because the age. Yeah, yeah definitely. I just think because the age, you know, the amount of goals he's scoring. It's, it's not, so what are you me, saying? It's, it's the goals, but it's not even, it's just the goals. It's everything with him. It's the all-round ability. Like I say, Naismith as well. He's coming to his own. He looks like one of the best centre-halves in the league, like I say. Sonny, just a god in it, really. But I mean, Bree, I can get on to that because some people might call me an idiot, but, but you, still, but decent yeah, players, I think you know what I mean? No, it's a fun question. So it's if you're a really good right question. Now, really good question. Leave a comment below on YouTube or get us on socials over in the town. If we were to sell every single player in our team right now, how much money would we get? I'm saying easily 30 million, maybe more. What do you think? That's what I want to know. Um, Charlie says, will Adebayo leave in January? Uh, no, I don't think no, so. I think he will. I don't think he's so, but you know what? You have to prepare yourself. If, if an agent wants him to go, he'll go. That's the point. If the agents want him to go, he'll go. Mm-hmm. But if he's got any sense, he'll stay. He has sense. I don't think he'll yeah, go. Yeah, he'll Sam's, stay. Uh, he, he seems very grounded, doesn't he? Yeah, so. but, you know, because he's just only going to get better and he's only going to get better opportunities. <laughs> Sorry. Are you telling me this? Sorry, Sorry, I was just trying to get through to Sam's final question. I had a good point to make there. Yeah. Thank you. Sam says, were Fulham fans the worst set of fans that had ever come to the Kenny? Ever come to the set? You, you, well, hang on, no. Probably not ever. No, ever. W- it doesn't matter what set of fans it is. The worst set of fans that come to the Kenny, without exception, are those from up the road, the scummers up the road. Other than that, um, they were just terrible fans. Terrible. Very quiet. So, I can't believe yeah. how quiet they were. I know we touched on it earlier, but, you know, if you're top of the league and, and sort of bossing it, really... They're going to go up. Let's say, there's no question they're not going to go up. And then they'll come back down again. About their fans, right? Obviously, their fans are pretty, you know, pretty shit as well. Obviously, I heard a few of them outside the ground. Like, the weirdest thing I heard was a few of them going, yeah, you're near the bottom of the league. You're near the bottom of the league. I'm sitting there going, or well, standing there, should I say, walking, going, what? Near the bottom of the league? But honestly, some of the things that I know, a few of them outside the busway bit, they were trying to barge into people, and I thought, here we go. He just looked at him, you look, you look, think, mate, get your bottle of pop and your packet of crisps. Hey, listen, you, 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 know can, you can probably sum them up even by their um, commentator from, from, you know, the I follow that they have their own commentator mm. on the ground who apologised for the bad language in the ground. You know, he, th- he said football has moved on. Well, I've never been to a stadium where I've not heard any profanities at all. You know, it's, it's a weird situation. They expect that sanitised thing. They just... You know, how many of them were there when they were terrible? You know, that's how I look at it. Yeah. You know, they, they, they're, on the, they're on their Premier League thing, aren't they? So, yeah, probably one of the worst, but not the worst. Well, I will say the worst thing, well, they had the worst set of stewards. Oh, but Fulham they did, didn't they? Yeah. Fulham, they yeah. The Fulham worst set of stewards. That is one thing I will put my hands up and say, that is 100% true and... Anyone could tell me anyone or any stewards that are worse in any football ground. QPR the other week were us. much better. Yeah, QPR and the and the ones uh, that, and the ones that tried to chuck me out of Bradford. Oh yeah, I'd die if you were drinking a naughty <laughs> can of Coke, though, weren't you? Eh? Can of Coke was it? Can of Pepsi, uh, whatever it was. Uh, well, that's all we got time for today. Um, next Monday, we're going to try and record our Christmas episode of our podcast, which will be released on Christmas Eve, and it's one hundred percent happening now because we have secured one person for the podcast. Two. Two. And, and I'm trying to secure a third. A, I've just had a lovely text from uh, my friend, uh, Mr. Harford. So I've got a third one sorted. Thank you very much. You're doing three? 
No, I've got two to come, okay. but Mick Harford just texted me during the podcast there, so there you oh, go. Well, that's a bit of a name drop, isn't it? Yeah, because, uh, you know... Who texted you through the podcast? Because I just had producer Jacob text me through the podcast, no one, no one special. Um, yeah, it's rubbish, isn't it? You see, uh, if you have not got good friends, you shouldn't, you know, what can I say? Anyway, we're doing a podcast and, and a Christmas one on the same night. Yeah, and we'll have some cheese and wine. Cheese and wine. We'll have a bit of fun. Who's coming? Oh, uh, we'll have us three. I think we'll invite Steve back. He comes around every Christmas. What about day, so. what about producer Jacob? Oh, we'll get producer Jacob on Zoom. Yeah, because no, I, I was asked at the weekend. Yeah. I genuinely was asked at the weekend. What does Jacob look like? Oh God, no one wants to see that. I described him. No one wants to see that. Have we got a camera big enough for Zed. <laughs> Sorry, Jake. That's really rude. I love you, man. Uh, Sorry, man. Look, we're laughing, but no one else knows because they don't know what Jake. Look, go follow Jacob on Twitter if you want to see what producer Jacob does because he does work very hard on the podcast. Go follow him on Twitter. He starts his new job tomorrow, uh, but he's still carrying on producing the podcast. Good luck, Jacob. Like a legend. Um, yeah, Jacob Roach on Twitter. Go follow him. What a lad. Um, that's all we've got time for then. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for and watching. No, no one texts me during the podcast, by the way. Do you yeah. know what? Next week, Sad, I'll, next week, I'll text you. Oh, what, during the podcast? Yeah. Oh, cheers, man. That's nice. That's oh, very good. Thanks, Dave. See, see that? Take fucking note, mate. <laughs> I don't even know who we're playing. We're playing Reading, aren't we? Oh, boring. Bloody bo- boring game away at Reading. Oh, hey, l- l- as long as we get three points up there, it'd be fantastic. Well, we'll be here to discuss it all next Are Monday night. Going? So uh, I can't go. Are you boys going? No. Not allowed to. Because no? Well, we, there's, a, there's a family thing going on that I need not to go to. to. No, I'm I not have going. to go. All oh. right, no, sorry, I'm going to go. See you there. Cool. Well, we'll see you there. Have a good weekend and a good week ahead, and we'll see you next week.